Hi guys, welcome to another lesson on number patterns. Okay, so far we've looked at the arithmetic sequence and uh, we realized that, or what we learned is that we recognize an arithmetic sequence by the fact that it has a constant difference, a very important fact, a constant difference. And uh, now looking at the geometric sequence, we're also going to look at its two uh, key factors. How do I identify it? And what is the general term? Okay, so identify. How do I identify a geometric sequence? Okay. Now, the geometric sequence has got a constant ratio. Now, it's not going to make much sense with just me saying the word, so let me give you an example. Let's say we have the number 5, 15, 45, 135. Okay, here's a sequence going on and on and on to eternity. Okay, now you will notice that there is not a constant difference. For example, if I take 15, let's just take the, the difference and see. 15 minus 5 is 10. 45 minus 15 is uh, 30. 20, 30. Okay, so maybe we're jumping in 20s. Okay, the constant difference is actually jumping in 20s. Let's see, or the difference. Uh, the next one is 90. No, it is indeed not. It is indeed not. Okay, so it's not that. But what you do notice is that 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. 45 divided by 15 gives me 3 again. And 35 divided by 40, uh, 135 divided by 45 gives me 3 again. And this time we find a constant ratio. This is a constant ratio. That is how I identify a geometric sequence. Sometimes it's also uh, called a geometric progression. A geometric progression. As the same with the arithmetic. can be called arithmetic progression. Now, if we look at the first two values in this... Uh, uh, a little diagram that I made. This one is still my first term and it will take the value of A. That is still my first or alpha term. And this 3 will be will take the value of R and be called the constant ratio. Now uh, you'll understand now why I'm giving you an A and an R because in our next, uh, what we look at next is the general term. The general term. Now you'll remember that any sequence has got a term, has got term numbers or term positions. Therefore, for example, 5 is in the first position, 15 the second, that's the third position, and those values are the values that n will take. We will use an n to represent those values. Now the general term is the is a formula for term values. So if I know I want the hundredth term then I will use the general term and that hundred to work it out. Now the general term is for a geometric sequence is your first term multiplied by R for n minus one times. And it all makes quite sense because um, if I go to the second term I've multiplied with my ratio once. If I go to the third term, I've multiplied with it once, twice. When I go to the fourth term, I've multiplied with it three times. So for every term, I've multiplied by my ratio one times less 
than the term position. Okay, and uh, there we go. That is the general term for our geometric sequence. Let's look at a few examples on how we use this. Here's a uh, simple example. Find the eighth term of the geometric progression, sometimes represented by GP, and there they give us the geometric progression. Okay, so let's go ahead and just f just find the constant ratio. Okay, the constant ratio. Since we know it's a geometric term, uh, uh, geometric progression, we can we know we we need to divide. So 16 divided by 32. 16 goes into itself once and into 32 two times. 8 divides into itself once and into 16 two times. So I see 8 over 16 or 16 over 32 are both the value 1 over 2. So that is our constant ratio. But actually sometimes even the very first thing I do is to actually write down my uh, formula. And therefore please remember never in any of our tests will you get formulas. Therefore, you have to know these formulas by heart. Please take that very seriously. Okay, so my first term is 32. My constant ratio is a half. And for now, we're not replacing n yet. Okay, we just want our general term first. And there's a formula to find any term. Now, we can go ahead and they asked us to find the eighth term. So, we'll... Uh, put in the 8 into the position of n because the 8th term means the term in the 8th position. n is therefore 8. Sorry. And then now I can replace my half, ach, my, thit, my n with the 8 and therefore 32 times a half to the power of 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. Okay, so I get 32 is actually 2 to the power of 5. And then I am multiplying this with 1 over 1 to the power of 7 and 2 to the power of 7. Which means it's 2 to the power of 5 minus 7 or 2 to the power of negative 2. Which is simply 1 over, remember, a negative exponent means whatever is in front, which in this case is a 1, the coefficient is divided by 2 for 2 times. And we can simplify that just once more to say 1 over 4. So the 8th term would be a quarter.